Hi everyone, Flaming Footy here, and welcome or welcome back to a new video on the channel. And today, guys, I'm going to be con continuing my AFL 2023 three game match reviews, reviewing the first three games of round four of the 2023 AFL season. If you are wondering why, why my voice may sound flat, it's because I've just come off of a stream streaming the Tigers versus the Western Bulldogs, so that's why my voice is quite flat right now. Um, but yeah, if you did tune into the, fr in, into the stream, I hope you did enjoy. Uh, but anyway, let's go ahead, hop right into things. All right, first game of the round was the Lions and the Pies at the Gabba. Big Thursday night Easter um, preview, I guess, thing. Big Thursday night clash there at the Gabba. And the Lions, 18-8, 116, beat the Pies. 11-17-83. The Pies are all right. They got exposed in some places. Uh, but still really actually did play quite well. It was just the Lions that just seemed to outsmart them in everything. And inaccuracy probably did also cost the um yeah cost the pies a little bit in the end at 11 17 um so yeah as you can see the pies did own the first quarter and that was the only part of the game which they did own uh from there on it was a pretty sad story there for the pies goals in the second term which who would have thought that and um yeah the lions took full advantage kicking the five goals that term one two three four five six actually kicking six goals that term um and then yeah in the third quarter they really do go ahead and put the Pies away, even though the lead doesn't change that much, but they still do put them away. 30 points at three-quarter time, and the Pies get a little bit close, but in the end, not close enough to actually think they could win. Um, Cameron, six goals. Nick Dacos, 38 disposals, 126 fantasy, and five tackles for Connor McKenna. Will Hoskin Elliott, still side bottom. Daniel McStay, Oleg Markov. Lots of players there with the five tackles. AFL fantasy now. 126 for Nick Dacos, best on ground probably. 107 for Cameron, 199 for Rayner, 95 for McInerney, 91 for Danaher, 89 for Pendlebury. Six goals for Cameron, he was the difference in this game. Four goals for Rayner as well. Um, they've tried him in the back line. His place is the forward line. Uh, provides a real spark down there. Three goals for Mychek, two goals for Dacos, Hipwood, Hill, Danaher. Disposals, 38 for Dacos, 26 for Ashcroft, 26 for Pendlebury, 25 for Dunkley, Maynard, uh, 23 for Josh Dacos. Tackles, uh, you know what, we'll bring marks back in. Seven marks for Andrews, Berry, six for lots of players, so I'm not going to go through it. Five tackles for, we know, um, McKenna, Hoskinelli, Mark of McStay, side bottom. Hit outs, 43 for McInerney, dominated McStay, who was their ruckman, their prime ruckman. They didn't actually have a ruckman, so they went with him. 15 for him, 6 for Frampton, 4 for Danaher, 2 for Johnson. Teams, team stats, Pies went inside 50 more times. However, um, again, inaccuracy does uh, lead to problems. Uh, clearances, the Lions won 46-37. The Pies won the center clearances. But the uh, Lions won the stoppage clearances. They smashed them in the hit outs, we already know. Um, 16 to 10 marks inside 50 as well. But when it does go to grounds, that's where Charlie Cameron and Cam Rayner can be very dangerous. As they showed in this game, Brisbane, they were on in this game. They've picked their times and they've been on this year. But they're currently 2-0 at the Gabba, which is a great start to their year. And the Pies, they, they lose their first game of the season. Good Friday footy at Marvel. It is no longer the dogs that are in this game. It is now the Blues. North Melbourne versus Carlton. And North Melbourne, uh, as I have already said, uh, actually looked okay in this game to North. They looked okay. And North might be all right this year. North Melbourne might be okay this year. Uh, Carlton won by 23 in the end. North Melbourne, 84. So 11, 18, 84. Carlton, 16, 11, 107. They just lost it in that third quarter. Um, North where they just let the Blues get away. And at the start of that fourth quarter where they really got away. Um, but yeah, the Blues did look like they could have won this game by 50 at one stage. But in the end, North do kick a few goals late just to um, bring the margin back. But I'd say to be completely honest, North Melbourne probably won the first two quarters as well. They let it both breaks, but they just won them just, just because they were in the game. They looked pretty decent. The Blues didn't look quite as good. But yeah, that's the game changed in the third quarter. That's where Carlton won that term and the game was in that third quarter. North side well, but the Blues kicked one, two, three, four, five, six goals in a row. They're six for the term. And that's where the game goes uh, disappearing. They start last quarter well, but in the end, North come back to cut the margin to 23. Lucky not to lose by more. 37 disposal for Sheasel, 119 fantasy for Sheasel and Mackay. Uh, Charlie Kerner kicked six goals, Liam Shields, Adam Scherer uh, with the seven tackles each. So AFL Fantasy, um, 119 for Sheasel and Mackay, 
140 for Kerner, 100 for Zebul, 94 for Simpkin and Cripps, 93 for McGovern, 91 for Davies Uniac. Now, as I did say as well in the stream when I was reviewing this game, um, yeah, the North are a different side when Luke Davies Uniac and Guy Simpkin are playing. They're really important in the midfield and really can help them get the um, the ball out of the middle and uh, inside for their forwards to, to feed off. Um, six goals for Kerno, four for Mackay. Those were the two that did put the North Melbourne that put North Melbourne away. Three goals for Zerha, three goals for he did miss a couple chances in front of goal. Three goals for Stevenson, two goals for Motlop. Disposal, 37 for Fiesel, 30 for Davies, Uniac and Cripps, 29 for Simpkins, Zebel, 28 for Fisher, 27 for McGovern. Marks, 14 for Mackay, that's a lot. 12 for Weedering, 10 for Young, 9 for Kerno, that's a lot. Uh, all in favour, well, all for the Blues there. Seven tackles for Shields and Cher, as we know. Six for Durden, five for Cripps. Hit out, 32 for Goldie, 30 for Pitnet, six for DeConi. So quite an even ruck battle. Um, not much in. North did go inside 50 more times than the Blues. So they still had their fair uh, share of chances. It was just that they missed a fair few of them as well. Uh, North won clearances. It's amazing what Luke Davies, Uniac, Jai Simpkin can do. They won that 41 to 30, 15 to 14 out of the centre, 26 to 16 stoppage. Um, right, let's see. Marks, Carlton dominates 74 to 117, 9 to 12 inside, 56 to 14 contested marks. Big difference there. The Blues did lead for a little over half the game. And in the end, after a gallant North Melbourne side, they got the win and got the job done. And now to the final game for this three-game match reviews. It is the Crows and the Dockers at the Adelaide Oval. Adelaide, 17 911 Fremantle, 10 12 72. The Crows are here. The Crows are here in 2023. They've rocked up to the party late. You could arguably say they'd be 4-0 after their accuracy uh, problems in round one and two. Round three and four, they've kicked really straight. They've scored over 100 the past two weeks. They are looking very good. Led by their young talent, Rankin, Rochelle, Soligo. They've got a whole bunch of players. And the Dockers just got exposed. And one thing which I also learned after watching this game as well, the Dockers in the Derby actually probably weren't as good as we thought. Yes, they won the Derby really well last week, but the Eagles were in it for most of the game. They just got away when the Eagles had injured players. So the Crows really did put them away by half-time, really. They are up by 36 at half-time. And after a disappointing third quarter, they put them away in the last to get a very comfortable win and a very good one, for that matter of fact, as well. So great job there by the Crows. Not just... Not just... Um, yeah, not just putting a team away by... 30 points to going, okay, job done, but starting to go towards the 40, starting to really put teams away. They kicked the last two goals of the game to really go goodbye, Dockers, and turn what could have been a 27-point win into a 39-point win, just like that, boosts some percentage as well. 31 disposed for Brayshaw, four goals for Walker, 122 fantasy for Dawson, seven tackles for Brayshaw and Sarong. Um, the Crows did look lively out of the middle. The Dockers did look good on counter, but that was pretty much it. 122 fantasy for Dawson, 108 for Brayshaw, 106 for Sarong, 96 for Ryan, 92 for... Rankin, Phil Thorpe, Darcy. Four goals for Walker, three for Rankin and Rochelle, two for Golant, Banfield, Saligo, Tabner, and Schultz. Amos was lively, one goal, two. Tabner kicked two goals and desperately needed to get back in form. And Banfield was impressive with his two goals, one. Um, definitely needed that to avoid being dropped, as he seems to be the one which the Dockers do always drop uh, when it comes to the selection table. 31 disposal for Brayshaw, 28 for Laird, 28 for Sarong, 27 for Dawson. Marks, 9 for Thilthorpe, 7 for Saligo and Cox. Now we'll go to the tackles, 7 for Brayshaw, Sarong, 6 for Dawson, Sloan, Clark, Schultz. Hit out, 38 for Darcy, 29 for O'Brien, 8 for Jackson, 4 for Thilthorpe, 1 for Taylor Walker. Team stats, inside 50s locked at 51-51. The Crows did win in disposals, travelling via kick more than Hamble. Uh, the Dockers won all aspects of clearances though, 34 to 46 hit outs, 35 to 44 clearances, 7 to 12 out the centre, 28 32 stoppage. Uh, the Crows had more un way more uncontested footy than the Dockers, took way more marks, 87 to 61, 12 to 6 of those being inside 50. The Crows did lead for the whole game and pretty much right from the start from quarter time, they looked more classier and deserved that win pretty comfortably from there the whole game. Alright, so I'm just going to go over the games anyway. Now that are on and have been, I did stream Richmond Dogs, just got off that. And the Dogs won by five in the end, an absolute thrilling game. That'll be in tomorrow's three-game match reviews. Saints Suns currently locked at 8-8. Eight, eight. That'll also be in tomorrow's three-game match reviews. And Sydney Port Adelaide, 7-2 in favour of the Swans. Um, 
will also be in tomorrow's three-game match. Reeves in the final three-game match. Reeves, Essendon Giants, West Coast, Melbourne, and Geelong Hawthorne. All right, and at the moment, this is the ladder after the Richmond Dogs game. Uh, and, yeah, I'll just chuck it on live for a little bit. Just then you can see what it looks like. I uh, highly doubt the Saints will draw with the Suns. And at the moment, apparently, the updated live ladder said the Suns will win, so the Suns win. They go into 10th. Uh, yeah, the Saints win. They will be the side which will be undefeated. And then Swans, Port Adelaide. Interesting stuff there. What a great three games we have had to start off the Easter round. Thank you, guys. Also, much for watching. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell. Sing guys, name is the on the channel. Thank you guys. We'll smash and subscribe run. Flame for the out.